it's not going to be an approximation anymore. It's so small that that's going to be exactly what the volume is. So yeah, exactly. Take a limit. So this is an approximation. How I make it exact is I go, all right, take a limit as n goes to infinity of this same thing that we had. And I'm hoping you can figure out what, what comes of this. I think I told it to you before. What's a limit of a sum? What's a limit of a sum? That's what it is. It's an interval. And so we'll be, we'll be doing these through, in, using the interval, not through the mod sum. Well, let's explain that in just a bit, okay? Just understand that this is going to give you an integral from where you start to where you stop. Where A and B are the start and ending points of your volume, and they have to be perpendicular to the x-axis. Otherwise, you can't make slabs. You follow me? <coughs> A of xk dot becomes A of x, the area function of your, of your function. And then the delta x becomes dx. And A of x is the cross-sectional area over the interval from A to B. what we talked about so far. Now, are you going to have to do Raman sums? No, i just proven it to you. Why would you do Raman sums? That's way easier. Shoot, don't do that, that whole process. But I proved it to you, didn't I? Showed you how this all works. That way when I give you this, you're like, that doesn't make sense. Well, yeah, it does. It actually does. It says, this is cross-sectional area with whatever the width is, and you're adding them all up from A to B. That's all it says. It's just a different way to say this right here. <clears throat> Easier to calculate, though, because you know how to take an integral, don't you? Yes. Awesome. Uh, by the way, does it have to be along the x-axis? No. Oh, yeah. Did you have any questions on this? <laughs> I don't do it on purpose, but I think I can redraw it. Yeah. No, it's supposed to be. See me after. We could probably do the same thing according to the y-axis, except, except instead of being perpendicular to the, the x, it'd just be perpendicular to the y. You turn your head, it's got to be that way. So we do the same thing with respect to y. So in our case, the volume would equal, hey, where would you start and where would you stop? Start C or D? C to D. C. Small to big. <coughs> of whatever the, hap whatever the area of the cross section was according to Y. And then you have D. That would be it. That's the X. Yeah. Just checking. Making sure. Make sure you're awake. Good. Yeah, dy. It's such a habit to put the dx, isn't it? You always want to put that. But watch, watch your variables. So basically what this says in English is the volume of a solid is found by integrating the cross-sectional area from A to B. That's what that says in English. The, the volume is found by integrating the cross-sectional area, the area of the cross-section of a three-dimensional space from well, C to D in this case, or from A to B. Would you like to see an example of how this is done? Yeah. It's kind of cool. It's not, not too bad. Let me give you this one.
sorry for those of you who are not three-dimensionally inclined. These are probably really hard to draw, so my bad. Well, actually, you're bad. I'm not the one screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> I really am kind of a nice guy out of class, but you wouldn't know it, would you? All the jerk things I say. Uh, this is a one here and a five. One and five. Now, would you like to see how this is done appropriately? Firstly, we're going to have to find, now this is a kind of a, these are simplistic examples to start with, just so you know. Very simple. Why are they very simple? Why make it complicated? I'm going to make it complicated, yes. Why is this simple? Does the function ever change? No. It's a uniform function the whole way, okay? It's going to be uniform uh, aerial cross-section, cross-section cross -section area the whole way through. So what we know is that the volume is going to be the integral of the cross-sectional area from where the function starts and from where the function stops. Now, first thing, does this qualify? Do I have planes that make 90 degrees with x-axis or the y-axis or the other? Yeah, this is, this is 90 degrees and that's 90 degrees. So that's, that's great. That's what we need. Can you please tell me what's the area of the cross-section? How are you getting that? Well, you got a circle at one end, and that's your. Point. Sure. So if we cut this thing right down, and if we cut this, and then turn it and look at it, that's going to be a circle. Do you see the circle? So the circle is pi r squared. Cool. Okay. In our case, what is it? How much is the pi r squared? What's the r? Uh, the radius is one. Sure. The radius is one. Radius go well. Can you see the radius is one? Yeah. Diameter is two. Radius has to be one. So for us, it's pi one squared. Pi. Would you all agree that the cross-sectional area of this figure is simply pi? And it doesn't change. There's no x involved in it because it doesn't change. It says it's a constant. It's a, it's a circle stacked up right next to each other. So what our, our theory says here is that the volume should be equal to an integral from where it starts. Where does it start? Along the x-axis. Where does it start? I'm sorry. Okay. One to where? Of the cross-sectional area dx. Because we're going along the x-axis. Show of hands, how many people feel okay with this so far? Cross-sectional area, it's just an area of a circle. That's pi in this case, the radius is 1. That is cross-sectional area, that's a constant. There are no x's because it does not change. If it changed, we would have x's for sure. It'd be a function in terms of x. Now, we're going from 1 to 5 because it's where we start, that's where we stop, that's where our planes are perpendicular, no problem. Hey, can you find the integral of pi dx? Not too hard. What's the integral of pi dx? Pi x. With a little thing, that's your evaluation symbol. From where to where? So this says pi times 5 minus pi times 1. What's pi times 5 minus pi times 1? 4 pi. That's kind of neat. We just used, well, it is neat until you realize you can do this without calculus. But <laughs> it's kind of neat that you're able to find the volume using calculus. Now, let's just be clear that this is true, because this is simply a cylinder, right? What's the volume of a cylinder? Pi r squared height. Hey, th think, about, think about what you're doing, okay? Think. Just think. The volume of a cylinder is the base area times the height. You basically stack up circles. That is literally exactly what we're talking about here. It's the area and you stack up all the circles. That's what we're doing. Same thing. So it should work out the same thing. Volume is pi times 1 squared times height. The height in this case is really the length. What's 5 minus 1? It's 4. Huh. 1 squared is 1 times 4 is 4. 4 pi. 
This might not seem so impressive to you, but getting the same answer is kind of neat, right? Now, unfortunately, for, unfortunately, these don't always happen, right? You're not always going to get that formula. Not always going to get that. Did you understand that so far, though? Mm -hmm. Now we can just take it a step further. We're still kind of basic, basic, okay? We're, we're going. Are we going slow enough for you? Yeah. You understand everything, right? Hopefully, this is slow enough, man. We're going to start talking about some more unique shapes. Not just cylinders, but we're going to get some, some other things. So, what we'll do now is say, let's suppose you have some function, and you start revolving it around an axis. Do you see that it's going to create a, a solid? The sweep out area is going to create some sort of a solid. Are you with me? Let's, let's get a picture of those before we do anything too drastic. Let's see what they're, they're making. And what we're going to call this subsection is <clears throat> a solid of revolution. A solid of revolution means the solid you get if you take some like a piece of paper or solid shape and revolve it around an axis. You're going to get a solid of revolution. Let me give you a for instance here. If you took that shape, and you, you, what is that shape? This. You took that shape, and you revolved it around the x-axis. What's it going to make? So basically, you do this. You go sweep it out. That's a horrible idea. Let's see if I can find something better. This is much more. Yeah, now you see it. Take it, revolve it. That's just creating a cylinder in space. Do you see the cylinder in space? <clears throat> oh, right to the right page, too. Awesome. So this, if I did, yeah, that's going to create exactly what we had right here. This is basically a rectangle that's sweeping out an area, an area a solid revolution. Sorry, volume. So this would create... This shape. Basically, I didn't draw it very nicely, but it creates that cylinder that we were just talking about. <coughs> well, I really jacked that thing up. Forget this. Hang on. I'm going to make it nicer for you guys than that. Basically, the shape that you get. What about this? What if I took that? Yeah. If I took a half circle and I revolved it, I'm not going to get a half sphere, am I? I'm get a full, full sphere. sphere. Which means that to get our, our solids, you can still deal with a function. Because if I took a full sphere and revolved it, uh, sorry, full circle and revolved it, it still make the same exact shape. Actually, some people would say, well, it sweeps out twice the volume because they have twice the sides. But it makes the same exact overall shape. It makes a sphere still. So this, if I did, yeah, sure, I'm going to get 